Okay, so before I jump into it, I just want to very quickly mention that there is bonus content for sale for this tutorial. So there's a reference sheet that shows the head from several different angles, including above and below, as well as a Z tool and an OBJ of the model I'm going to create in this tutorial. These items are not required to follow along, but they will help, as well as help support this channel and allow me to keep creating tutorials like this one. So thank you. Okay, so continuing on from where we left off last week, this is usually about the point in the sculpt where I would start tailoring it towards a concept. However, I'm not working from a concept in this tutorial series, partly because I can't draw, and partly because I can't afford a copyright lawyer. So what I'm going to do instead is just create a sort of generic head, and that's fine because what's important here are the techniques used, and the techniques don't really change very much from character to character. Okay, so let's jump into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is insert a sphere and this is going to be the eyeball. I'm going to turn transparency on then shrink that down. Now one thing you can do is after you've performed an action is press the number one and that's just going to repeat that action. That's usually quite useful if you want to enlarge something or shrink it down like this. And put it roughly in place. Again like in part one it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to be moving things around as I go along. Now I'm going to solo this and turn perspective off. Then I'm going to control click on the canvas to mask the whole thing, then control alt click a little line in the centre like this. Come over to extract, 0 0.02 works pretty well for the size of the default sphere here. So I'm going to extract that and then click accept and this is what I'm left with. Okay, now I want to rotate these from around the centre and the way I'm going to find the centre of these eyelids is by clicking on the eyeball and then clicking this white button here and what that's going to do is push this transpose line right into the centre of this and then I just press my down arrow key and I'm, I'm on here and I'm set up ready to move this around in a minute. So what I'm going to do now is come up to Z Remesher, put the target polygons to around 1 and hit Z Remesher. And this is what I'm left with. I'll subdivide that just once and then solo this out and mask the bottom section. And I'll rotate this up slightly and then I'll rotate this down a little bit more. And the reason I rotate the bottom one down a little bit more is because if you look at an eyeball, you'll notice that the top eyelid is much closer to the central line than the bottom. So that's why I've done that. Turn perspective back on. And it looks as though this eyeball is sticking out a little bit too much. So I'm going to turn perspective off again. And the way I adjust this before I merge these two together because I, I am eventually going to merge the eyelids and the eyeball just to position and size a little easier later but for the time being what I'm going to do is just select the eyeball move it back a little bit like that press the down arrow key to select my eyelids and I've noticed the top one still masked so I'm just going to unmask that I'm going to have to repeat this action because I've done that so I'll just undo that and then do it again now press the down arrow key and if I press 1 it's going to repeat that last action as I just established a minute ago. So I'm at this point and you can see that the eyelids come to a point way too far back. It needs to be much closer to the middle and that's because when I created this cut out like this I made it a little bit too thick. So basically the thinner you make that the closer you're going to be to having this correct right off the bat. But it doesn't really matter because it's not a difficult fix. So what I'm going to do is come over to Mask by Polygroup, so that's in Brush, Auto Masking, Mask by Polygroups, make sure that's turned up to 100. I've actually got a shortcut button up here that I'll be using for this, but you can find it over here. Okay, so coming back to the eye, what I'm going to do, now that I have this Auto Masking by Polygroups turned on, I can move these separately. I could actually also use move topological with this. So I could turn that off and put, use my move topological brush and it would have the same effect. And now what I'm going to do is sort of make the shape of the eyelids a little more. And usually with a stylized eye like this one, this corner is going to be higher than this one. So I'm going to lift this one up for this side and bring this one down for this side. 
make sure that where these two meet is a bit further over like this. It doesn't matter if it looks a little bit messy now because it's going to get retopologized and that's really when things start to clean up. Okay, so something like that. Now what I'm going to do is merge these two together like I mentioned earlier. So merge, merge down like this. And what that allows me to do is control these two together. And so if I press that little white dot, I can get right in the center again. So if I want to make the eye bigger, you can see how easy that is. Push it back into position like so. Move it close to the center maybe. And then what I'm going to do is come over to deformation and hit mirror. And then I'm going to come over to geometry, modify topology and mirror and weld. And then turn on symmetry. And now that I have the proportions roughly where they want them, I'm going to split these up again. So I'm going to come over to split and I'm going to hide the eyelids and then just do a split hidden like that. I'm just going to refine the shape of these eyelids a little bit because the top plane isn't as visible as I would like it to be from a front view. So I'm get, going to get my trim dynamic brush, subdivide it and just plane that off a little bit like that. And what I like to do is make sure that the visible plane is smaller on this side than it is on this side. And then the visible plane on the bottom eyelid is smaller on this side than it is on this side. And that just adds a nice little rhythm to the eyelid. Now I'm noticing something here and that's this top eyelid needs to be further forward than the lower eyelid. So something isn't right here. So what I'm going to do is just maybe shrink this eyeball a little bit. I just want to interrupt the original recording here just to explain the mistake I've made that's now requiring me to shrink the eyeball. Rather than re-record or gloss over this mistake I thought it would be a lot more useful for you if I highlighted it because of course this is how we learn and grow as artists. So what I'm going to do is reverse back to the point at where I think the mistake was made and that's right here. So you can see I pulled the eyelid down right at the front of the eyeball so it's not wrapping around the eye the way that it should be. Which is why I now need to shrink the eyeball so that the eyelid can wrap around a little better. Yeah I think I, think I need to shrink this eyeball a little bit and so I'm going to knock it into the centre like that and then just bring that down just a touch. And what that's going to do is give me space to move this bottom eyelid backwards a little bit. Now on a realistic eye you'll notice that this top eyelid usually sort of overlaps the bottom one however that's not usually a good idea for 3D just because it complicates topology and therefore it complicates rigging and it's just a lot easier to have these matching like this although that's not necessarily how a realistic eye would look. Now I'm going to look at the surrounding area of the eye. So looking at my reference, what I'm going to do first is just establish where the temporal line is going to be. And that's just going to help me place this section of skin here. And then I'm just going to add some clay here. So I'm going to sort of do it this way. And I'm looking at the shape that's been made between the top eyelid and this clay that I'm laying down here. I want to create a nice shape here. I'm going to subdivide the head just to give me more polygons to work with. And this is going to come down to around where the bottom eyelid is. And it's a very good idea to check three quarters view on here because that's where I think you see how the shapes are working the most for this area. Okay, and then again I'm going to do the same at the bottom looking at the shape that's being created with this bottom eyelid. It's uh, the deepest point is usually around here. So you end up with like a sort of V. And that the bottom of that V is kind of where this temporal line comes down. So I'm, I'm thinking around here. Now I'm just going to get my damn standard and just refine 
the shape of the brow up here just because I'm I'm losing that a little bit from a side view it goes from wide to thin here and check three quarters does it look right not quite check it from above and below as well it's always important Check, check your actual eyelids and eyeball from three quarters view as well. That, that's going to help you. And now what I'm going to do is just show you how I polypaint the eyeball. And the reason I'm going to do that is the further you can progress the eye, the uh, the more confidence you're going to have in your sculpts because the eyes are really the focal point of the piece. So if you can get them down early, then like I say, you sort of feel a bit more confident with the direction you're heading in. At least I do. 